Greetings and welcome everyone. This is fantasy and automotive artist Ed Beard Jr. This is a series called Artist Ed Beard Jr. Time-Lapse Demos and Instruction Series. But before we get into that, let me tell you a little bit about me. I've been illustrating for books, games, and licensed products for the entertainment and collectible industry for almost 40 years now. I've worked on products such as Dungeons and Dragons, Magic the Gathering cards, Tolkien Lord of the Rings, and other card games, magazine covers, children book covers. I've done the Dragon Calendar that you found at Barnes and Nobles and Borders, and over a thousand licensed products from jigsaw puzzles, cell phone covers, to throw blankets. I specialize in old school, hand painted, hand drawn craftsmanship using tangible mediums. I've also been an automotive airbrush artist since 1980. My airbrush work can be found at major car shows and industry trade shows like SEMA, where I usually have a featured vehicle. And to learn more about my automotive airbrush work, check me out at airbrushbybeard.com. All of the links are in the video description as well as the end credits. So once again, thanks for tuning in and enjoy the show. Hello everyone, this is fantasy and automotive airbrush artist Ed Beard Jr. We're here in the first of my series of the artist Ed Beard Jr. time-lapse demo and instruction series. Today's demonstration is the Yin Yang. This will be accelerated to eight times speed so that you can actually watch this manifest and come together before your eyes. I will be going over the tools that I've used. I will talk a little bit about the subject matter and the topic, how the image is laid out, what are significant components about it. So let's proceed without further ado. So you'll see here as I'm pointing to both the sun and the moon, the sun is at the top. It is held by the knight or the cool represented by the female dragon that is on top of the yin yang. The bottom is the male, which represents the day, the fire, and it holds the moon. Now this came from an ancient Tao, basically 800 years ago, a description of what these symbols meant. There are five elements. We have the fire at the top. We have the mountain. We have the iron ore, which is of course the sword. Then we have the water, ice, and wood. These are the five elements. And of course the key and most important thing is the composition. It was both to be realistic as well as kind of logo-like, graphic if you will. So I had to combine both graphic elements with three-dimensional realism. And that of course is where we get into the shadowing and the highlighting, which is what today's fast forward time lapse is all about. So let's talk about our tools. We start off with the graphite pencils. We have the HB, which we used for the predominant majority of the line work. I will also be using other pencils. Uh, we'll be having, for instance, the 2B. This is where the graphite's a little bit softer and allows for a much darker look uh, when I shadow and shade. It also gives me a little more bolder line. Next in line would be probably the 4B. Now the 4B, of course, being a much softer graphite, um, and again, going back to the product uh, brands, I use a variety. I can use Derwent, um, I can use Stadler, it really doesn't matter, it's whatever you feel comfortable with. They're all reasonably decent products. And you've seen that we are using the Fine, which we'll get into the fine details with. That's a very hard graphite. And then probably a 5 and a 6B, which is also there in my hand. And here you have, once again, the 4B. Now these are the Tortillan shading stumps. The Tortillan shading stumps are used to blend and smudge the, sh the graphite that I put down. And then highlighting is done with the Faber-Castell, um, it's a dust-free eraser. It's really fantastic for cutting in nice bright highlights. Lastly, with that eraser, you're gonna have some dust. So you always wanna have a uh, brush to be able to dust off those extra fellow elements that are left behind. Here we have the sandpaper. That's gonna be able to take off any of those nubs or nicks that are on the pencils after you've sharpened them. You wanna be careful because anytime you've sharpened your pencil, especially with a mechanical sharpener, you may get those sharp edges and you don't wanna be cutting into the paper. So as a result, I, I do a little quick with the sandpaper, taking off the nubs and the edges, and then I test it on a secondary piece of paper. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do, as you can see here, is clean up any of the smudges, fingerprints, and so forth, just to get started so I'm not confused by anything I'm seeing. I'm getting started with a clean line contour. I'm gonna start off with the shadows right under the brow of the 
female dragon up above. I'm also considering my light source as I'm doing this. And the light source, of course, in this case, is coming from both the sun and the moon. That's the strongest light source. However, I will have reflective light coming from above on the outside perimeters and edges. So you notice I'm leaving just a little highlight on the underside of the brow, and I will keep that consistent through everything I'm doing. As you get closer and closer on the anatomy of this dragon design, closer to that sun, I'm going to try to omit that area so that we keep that highlight there. But at the same time, I'm making sure I keep that on the darkest side, that slight little line of highlight. By the way, that little blip you just saw was our sponsor unofficially of Dove Chocolate because, you know, without Dove Chocolate, you just can't have creativity. Actually, any chocolate will do. I'm just a huge dark chocolate uh, fan. Now, as I'm doing the shadowing here, I'm actually working and using the shadows to create the textures, whether it be the scales or the shine, if I want a smoother feel. Now, this particular dragon has different types of scale plates, um, but at the same time, I'm looking at keeping them tapered because I want to keep that a little less aggressive male look. I want to keep that slender, more flowing, feminine dragon work look. Now here I am going over the lines just a little bit to define the outside edge of the back of the neck, as well as the inside. Once again, keeping in mind the light source and where it's coming from, shadowing most of the darks on the opposite side of the neck that is furthest away from the sun. You see a little bit here and there, I'll come in with an eraser. Sometimes you can overshadow with the graphite, so you wanna to try to back that off. Again, everything is going to be blended with the tortillas, and here we are, working on blending the tortillas as we speak. This is giving the extra graphite the ability to smooth itself out, fill in the areas that need to be filled in. And I don't have to worry about over smudging because I always can come back in with the eraser. Sometimes you may want to leave some of the texture of the pencil in there. Now you see there, I just used a kneaded eraser. One of the other things that you will use every now and then if you just want to slightly lighten up an area that you've just overshadowed a hair. Kneaded eraser is otherwise known as a gum eraser. It's basically a uh, softer, malleable eraser that allows for you to just dab on it to take those subtleties out, especially fingerprints and smudges. You can see here I'm adding some minor scales, some smaller scales, so just, just to just give it a little extra texture. But I'm still keeping those highlights in there. I don't want to kill it. I don't want to overshadow it. Now I'm going in and defining the claw that's holding the sun. Again, keeping in mind that I want to make sure that the part of the claw that is most closest to the sun does not get overshadowed. Working on the outside of the other wing, putting in some of the wing textures. Lines and the directions in which they take and those curves that you make are always essential to giving the depth the 3D effect. And in this case, to give that concave look within the webbing of the wing. Now behind the sun, I want to get some darks in there, especially important values. This way we've got that dark to light feel of negative positive space so that it allows for that sun to be that much brighter. So I'm using that back wing to be able to accentuate the sun a tad. Once again, redefining the lines of the bone structure of the, of the wing. Shadowing it on that opposite side, but still leaving a little teeny thin area which is 
on the darkest side, just at the edge of the line, which is known as reflective light. Being very careful not to overshadow any area that is closest to the light source. So this is always kind of a dance between giving it somewhat three-dimensional reality in light and shade, but at the same time maintaining the graphic design element that this image was supposed to be. Not only did I shadow in this section of the wing, but I also went in with the textured line work, once again, to give that webbing a feel of three-dimensional extrusion, if you will. You notice that second set of lines went somewhat in the opposite direction. Here I am, once again, redefining those lines so that we can see where the upper shoulder blade webbing would go. I'm going to shadow just a little bit on that side of the wing, the side that it actually carries a lot of the light, because the other fold in the wing would have cast a small shadow there. Going in with that kneaded eraser wherever I want to take out some of those extra smudges. I want to make sure I give it a good shadow underneath where the main bone structure of the shoulder and the upper arm bone would be. That gives it that extra depth level. And that's where you can see I'm casting a shadow. Redefining some new lines on that I guess this would be closest to the latissimus dorsi, as they may say. So this is right up against the side of the rib cage, And I want to once again create that as another layer of webbing. But still maintaining that shoulder design work that I've got that goes to the back where the scapula, the shoulder blade would be, uh, and, and making sure that still seems to be its own anatomical part, separate from the wing, and it rides right up against the body. And of course the body is dissipating into a design element into the shape of the yin-yang symbol. Here I am just putting in all the different small tiny scales just to give it some texture and some design work as we get closer and closer to finishing up the bottom end of the tail design as it goes into the lower part of the yin yang symbol. And now it's time to shadow. Consistent with the shadows up above, we want to keep that shadow right at that line that divides the night and day. A 
that spine ridge there, I've divided it up into segments. Going back over everything once again, just to give it some extra darks. Going in with the smudging tortilla. Blend in a little more just to give it a little more darks. Because remember, this is the female that represents the knight. It is a darker dragon. In the original hand-painted version, uh, the dragon is a dark black purple. So we want to keep that negative and positive yin-yang look consistent, but we also don't want to completely fill in all of the highlighted areas. That's the balance between just shadowing it enough so that we know it's a darker dragon and at the same time giving it enough shadow that it has some depth to it. And that's the dance that you have to do between the shadowing and the highlights, and then at the same time keeping in mind the intent of the piece, which is to make this a darker looking dragon without sacrificing highlight. You see now I'm starting to fill in the very, very darks behind the sun, which will help to illuminate the sun because of the contrast. Blending with the Totian smudging tool, the smudging stump, as we call it. And now I can actually use the graphite that's already there and that's on the Tortillian stump and actually start to s just a slight bit give some indication shadowings, uh, light rays, if you will, coming from the center of that sun. I'm also going over with the dust free eraser just to get some more crisper highlights. Now I've moved in with a darker graphite. You can see, I believe we're working with a 4B right now. This is going to give me the ability to really bring in those darks to get that dark point powerful and strong in depth. The HB is a great graphite pencil for the majority of the work you will do from dark to light in the spectrum. But the values that you want to get those real deep darks really does need to be put in by a softer graphite, such as a 4B, 5B, or 6B. Even going over all of the line work that right at the crest of where the highlight meets the shadow. Going back in with a tortillan stump, to shadow it up, take that dark, dark graphite and blend it. It's basically layering, layer on top of layer. There you see the full color version. Going in with that dust free eraser, brightening up the center of the sun. Now we're working on the trees, starting to put in some of the details of the forest and the trees on that side. These leaves are being done by just basically a lot of squiggly lines, impressions. We'll go back in and shadow some of them. Now I am keeping in mind, I just pointed this out, that I'm keeping in mind to keep my hand lightly or somewhat off the paper. Normally I would use another piece of art paper under my hand so as to prevent as much as smudging as possible, but for the purposes of these videos and demonstrations, we don't want to be blocking the work that I'm doing, so we're not using that. We're just being careful. Here I am working on the tree bark and the tree trunk that moves into the waterfall I'm putting in lines to give the texture for that. The roots. One of the five elements. Wood. Now 
Now while I'm doing this, I'm also considering the balance of the composition from left to right. As a result, I might have added a little extra on the wave down at the bottom. Here I am working on the fire. Uh, the impression of fire is created by shadowing in the darks up to the bright lights. You don't have light if you don't have dark. So you can see here I am just putting in some graphite. Working darker as we get further away from the source of the fire, which is closer to the head of the female dragon. I'm not worrying about how smooth the texture of the lines is right now because I'm going to blend it in with the tortilla and stuff. And here we are blending it in. Another tool on a quick uh, fly we use is a paper towel. Sometimes it's great for large areas to blend out. Now after using the eraser to, sure, to brighten up those highlights, again, this is the dust-free eraser. It isn't always dust-free, and that's why I've got my duster at the ready, which I very quickly used. So here's a close-up of the fire that was just done. You can see how the shadows were incorporated in to give that highlight. Then we have the tree trunk and the line work within the waterfall. close up on the different scales and lines. And this is just part one. Part two, we will go through the same steps and show you how we did the fire dragon or the male part of this yin yang. Many of my collectors and fans know me from the 30 plus years of visiting my Renaissance Fair gallery shops or even seeing me at the trade shows or as a guest artist at conventions. They've enjoyed the art prints, t-shirts, and other collectibles that I manufacture always in the U.S. and sell. You can learn more about that at my main site, which is edbeardjr.com. And by the way, while you're there, please sign up for the social media group Dragon Lord and Friends. That can be found at edbeardjr.com groups. This way you can interact with me and other like-minded fans of the fantastic, as well as Automotive Custom Airbrush. And by the way, for those who would really like to see this in real time and interact and watch live demonstrations, they can come on over to my Patreon. There's tons of perks, great giveaways. In fact, we do a free gift away each episode. You can find more about that at patreon.com slash artist edbeardjr. So once again, that's www.patreon.com forward slash artist edbeardjr.